Yes! I'm gonna get gas before I run out. Then I gotta go to the Marina Safeway Starbucks. Okay, now I gotta find out where my friend is gonna be at so I can find him. Here comes the rain again. Pounding on my helmet like a ride ruiner. Oh, I can do this. I know I can. Oh, there's that missed one-two shift again. Golly. Golly. All right. Michigan. How do I get into it? said neutral. The neutral light was lit. Gate Bridge, by the way. Ah. On the road again. Oregon. Oregon. So this is the lovely Napa wine country I was trying to tell you guys about in a previous recording, but as you can see, it's not as beautiful when it's all mucked up by a bunch of ugly construction and equipment. But we did some wine tasting over the weekend, and actually I've got to say that for my first time in Napa specifically, I found some wines that I actually liked. And we found wines that I liked at a place called Ravenswood and at a place called Rombok. Rombok? Rombouch? I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'll put a, a little... Uh, like some, I'll put up some text so you can see. And I got, um, I believe I got two Zinfandels. I feel like I'm. This is so out of character, me talking about wine stuff. I'm not like a wine snob. I don't know that much about wine, but I've come to Napa a few times to do wine tasting. And every time I've been here, I've kind of, you know, gone to different wineries with friends in the area who tell me that they know which places are good and every time I've gone I've been like uh oh, you know I don't really like these <laughs> these kind of make me feel not that great or they don't taste very good or they're too expensive or whatever and I've been to a few wineries in Southern California uh in the shoot Santa Barbara area Santa Barbara and north of there near Solvang that whole area and I've been to a few wineries that were pretty good up there, bought some wine from those guys, and I guess I've been to 12 or 15 Napa wineries now and only found two that were that I even felt it was worth to buy their wine. So that's not a very good track record considering how good California wine is supposed to be. I've actually found that my favorite wine area 
produ production area, my favorite wines tend to come from Austria, where they have sort of a, a mild tradition, I guess. Their tradition is to make wines with milder flavors, less aggressive, less bold, which is fine with me. I, I, I sort of feel the same way about the wine community as I do about the beer community these days. Uh, a lot of the hardcore beer and wine advocates will rate wines that punch you in the face with bold flavor that are not easy to drink, that sort of are difficult to drink because the tastes are so strong. And they rate those wines very highly. Same thing in the beer community. A lot of people won't give a beer a good rating unless it's difficult to drink because it's so hoppy or so uh, smoky or so, you know, whatever. So Belgian, so alcoholic. They only give extreme things good ratings, but I don't agree with that philosophy. You know, I'm, if I'm gonna dr sit down and drink a beer, I wanna enjoy it. I don't wanna be punched in the face by it and distracted from it. I mean, you can, just because a beer doesn't knock you off of your seat doesn't mean it isn't good. You can have a balanced beer that's delicious. And I feel like a lot of breweries and a lot of wineries and a lot of enthusiasts in both of these areas have sort of gone down a different path sort of I, I think of it as sort of an elitist attitude you know they they want to be challenged by the beer they don't want to enjoy it and I feel like if you want to be challenged by something you should be challenged by like a sport or an activity of some kind not by delicious treats that you're trying to enjoy in your time off but you know to each his own I don't I'm not I mean, I guess saying that they're elitist is a bit strong. They, they can do what they like. It's not my place to tell them what to enjoy. After all, I tend to enjoy spicy food, and you could argue that's the, sort of the same idea. Why would I want to eat something that challenges me, that's difficult to eat, that's painful? Uh, well, I don't know why, but, but I love it, and a lot of people love it. So I guess from that perspective, I can say that I do understand why people enjoy wines and beers that are difficult to drink that because they like that that uh, I don't know how to describe it they, they enjoy the adversity of that they have to overcome to enjoy what they are eating or drinking so that's it now I am leaving Napa going back out to the five which is a lot more it's going to be a much more boring ride 